Hi guys, what's up? It is my face story here and today I am on the acne channel because I want to talk to you guys about something pretty important and that is toxic relationships and how they affect your health, how they affect your skin. Yes, toxic relationships can affect your skin. Let's talk about toxic relationships. Let's talk about first identifying exactly what a toxic relationship looks like and then how it can you know affect your overall well-being toxic relationship it doesn't just have to be a boyfriend it can be a family member it can be a friend it can be a co-worker which you know some of these things you can't really avoid what is exactly a toxic relationship because some people fight you know sometimes people go through rough patches and that's not necessarily a toxic relationship that's just normal couple stuff or normal family stuff or normal friend stuff. So a toxic relationship has some common identifiers. The first one being that you feel so wrapped up in that other person's bullshit that you're not focused on yourself. You're not focused on your happiness. You're not focused on growing. You're so focused on this other person and what they are doing because they have you wrapped up in their life because that is like what they feed off of. The second thing is feeling drained after you spend time with that person. So make sure, you know, before you hang out with that person, like, how do you feel? Do you have a lot of energy? Are you feeling positive? And then maybe after you hang out with them, you feel negative and you just feel wiped and tired and emotionally drained. That's a big sign of a toxic relationship. Again, feeling worse than when you initially began hanging out with them. Anxiety, feeling upset, feeling like even jealous and I know like another big thing is also being constantly like let down by that person, like them feeling like fake promises or you kind of feel like picked at, like they're very like nitpicky at you about certain things that they know get under your skin just to like make you mad. They could like tease and nag you. And like if you're feeling constantly stressed when you're around this person and you feel like you have to walk on eggshells and you're super tense, like you can't do or say anything right, um, that's definitely a toxic relationship and you need to bye bye. You think it would be easy to spot something like this and you think it would be easy to just be like, okay, bye, out of my life. But sometimes it's kind of hard because it doesn't go from zero to 100 overnight. It usually happens very gradually, very slowly until you're so far deep into it that you don't even realize that it's not a normal relationship and that it is indeed toxic. One quote I heard that kind of explained it to me was, it's like you're sitting in a warm bath while someone gradually turns up the water over time and before you know it, you know, you're burned or worse, like you're dead. It's like a slow boil until the point where you're just like, can't take it anymore. Obviously healthy supportive relationships are a huge boost to your mental health. They're a huge boost to your emotional well-being and your physical well-being. But toxic relationships have the negative effect. They are detrimental to your health. Being in a chronically stressed state is going to affect not only your inflammation levels, but your adrenal glands as well. And we'll get more into that. It's like fight or flight. So being in this constant state of alarm and anxiety is really just going to weaken your immune system over time and your body isn't going to be able to like uh, function properly and kind of like fight off all of the diseases and everything that it needs to keep your body going how it's supposed to be going. The constant like up and down of toxic relationships, like it's real good or it's real bad, that's gonna trigger again the fight or flight response in your body, which is just like this constant state of alarm and adrenaline rush and having super high stress levels, cortisol levels and constant fatigue. If you are experiencing adrenal fatigue, which is one of the main symptoms of a toxic relationship. I'll read off some of the symptoms of adrenal fatigue because toxic relationships, again, cause inflammation in the body, which we all know acne is an inflammatory disease from the inside and adrenal fatigue. Adrenal glands are very, very, very important when it comes to skin because they basically send out hormones that tell everything else in our body how to function and what to do. Symptoms of adrenal fatigue are acne, hormonal imbalance, lack of energy, brain fog, dark under eyes, tiredness after exercising, multiple food allergies, depression, anxiety, low blood sugar, insomnia, low sex drive, that's one, and weight gain. Think of it this way, how this happens is it's not just like one fight or one bad thing that happens, like you get in a car accident. 
that's gonna trigger a fight or flight response. You're gonna be super stressed. You're gonna be like, oh my gosh, gotta get out of this car, gotta make sure everyone's okay, whatever. It's like that happening every single day for a year or every single day for two years. You're constantly in this state of alarm. You're constantly stressed. You can't focus on normal everyday things because you're so wrapped up in this other person's bowl crap. If you're suffering with adrenal fatigue, again, it's because you probably don't have enough D H E A. It's a parent hormone, okay, that creates all other hormones. So that again impacts how your entire body functions. Luckily, adrenal fatigue is not permanent in any way, shape, or form. You can heal it. And the main steps or the main things you can do to heal from it obviously, one, remove that toxic person, relationship, family member whatever situation out of your life, if it's stressing you out, if it's causing you to feel sick, if it's giving you acne, anxiety, depression, all that stuff, you do not need it, I promise. There are way better things out there for you. If it's a job, try to find a new job. Honestly, if it's a job you love, then maybe address that person and tell them, you know, leave me alone, I don't want anything to do with you. Bye, Felicia. <laughs> the three things that you can do for adrenal fatigue are cleaning up your diet. So begin an adrenal supporting diet, take adrenal supporting herbs like adaptogens and reduce the overall amount of stress in your life, duh. Adrenal supporting diet basically cut out the bad stuff, nix dairy, nix processed foods, get rid of cigarettes, alcohol, caffeine. Start eating a whole foods, plant-based diet if you can. Also things like fatty fish, salmon, nuts, walnuts, pumpkin seeds, chia seeds, fermented foods. Those are all gonna be really great for healing your adrenal system as well as celery juice. Celery juice is amazing because of all the micronutrients it contains and it helps to flush and cleanse out the body. The second thing you can do is, you know, if you can't remove yourself from the situation immediately is support with adrenal functioning, supporting, herbs, which are adaptogens. And adaptogens actually help the body to adapt to stressful situations. So they don't increase or decrease your cortisol level. They actually help your body to function how it's supposed to. So it's really amazing. It's like a natural way to deal with stress, anxiety, or you know, if you need to have a really kick-ass workout, there's ones that help with your stamina, endurance. The best one for adrenal fatigue though are ashwagandha and reishi. And those really do help with stress, they help with anxiety. These will relax your whole system and make you feel straight up zen like a goddess. You can also try oils like lavender, 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 lavender. You drink it and you put it on your skin and <laughs> rosemary. Lavender and rosemary, those will both help you to relax and decrease your cortisol levels. Those actually, when inhaled, actively decrease stress levels. Um, vitamin C, D, magnesium, and licorice root are also really good for your adrenals. And now let's talk about reducing everyday stress. I get that not everyone can take time to slow down, but doing like a few things a day for yourself or at least carving out like an hour to 30 minutes a day just for you, will make a huge difference. All of your priorities will be there when you get back. All of your responsibilities will still be chilling there. They're not going anywhere. Just take time to let the day melt off of you. Whatever that means for you. Some people like to take a bath. Some people like to read a book. Some people like to bake a cake. Whatever you like. The other main things that you can do is make sure you're getting enough sleep, which is super hard. I know when your adrenal glands are going crazy because a lot of people actually suffer with insomnia when they have adrenal fatigue. To cope with that, first of all, reishi. Second of all, sleepy time tea. Third of all, putting your phone away actually two hours before bed statistically gets you into a deeper sleep and you're able to relax more. So those three things should help. Exercising obviously <laughs> helps to balance cortisol levels. If you are suffering with adrenal fatigue, you might wanna slow down on the intense cardio at first. Things like yoga or walking are more suitable and then once you're deeper into your healing, start up that jogging again, girl. Lastly, minimize relationship stress. Huge. Whatever situation that is stressing you out, you need to remove yourself from that situation or you need to address that person and let them know, hey, this isn't okay. Set up your boundaries, let them know what they are or completely remove that person from your life, whatever it may be. And surround yourself with people who are supporting. I can't say that enough. Emotionally supporting and loving and people who are going to take you higher and not drag you down. It can take anywhere from 
a few weeks, you know, I have wings and I didn't realize this wing was tucked in. It can take anywhere from a few weeks to a few months, but healing from a toxic relationship, healing from adrenal fatigue, excess inflammation, it is possible. It will happen, it just takes time. So just learn to live more in the moment, relax and know that everything is going to be okay. All right guys, I feel like that was a good one, yes. And you might ask me, how do I know about adrenal fatigue? Girl, trust me, I know about adrenal fatigue, not just because I studied it, because I lived it myself with having my bad car accident, my parents' divorce, my husband in the military, working two jobs, driving two hours each day, um, back and forth between jobs and school full time. Uh, plus my dog almost died, car, another car accident, and my car dying like three more times. Constant financial stress for probably two years straight. I honestly think adrenal fatigue is what caused or triggered my cystic acne, but now I'm healing. Look girl, I'm good, I'm proof. You can do it too if I can do it too. You can do it too. <laughs> we can all do it too. That's what we got. Come here, Richie. Let's say goodbye. Let's say goodbye, come here. All right guys, that is all she wrote. And make sure you like, comment, subscribe down below. Next time, see ya. Say bye, Archie. Good job. <laughs>